Hello everyone, I am Edward, a student at North Carolina a and State University. Today, I'll be presenting on the topic, testing and evaluation of RF immunity of UAV for bridge inspection. This work is a collaboration between North Carolina a and State University and University of North Carolina at Charlotte. In recent times, we have seen the adoption of unmanned area vehicles in a variety of civil applications. In smart agriculture, UAVs are employed to monitor crops and also to perform irrigation. In the near future, packages we order on Amazon will be delivered to us with the help of UAV. Also, during rescue and search missions, rescue personnel use UAV to assist them to locate individuals who might need rescue assistance. In healthcare, UAVs are used to transport health equipment, vaccines, laboratory samples, pharmaceuticals, etc., between health centers. In transportation, UAVs are used to monitor and control traffic. UAVs are also widely used in infrastructure inspection. In the power sector and construction sector, UAVs are used to inspect power pylons and bridges respectively. Bridge inspection is receiving attention from several departments of transportation in the United States of America. This research is sponsored by North Carolina Department of Transportation. The use of UAV for bridge inspection comes with a lot of benefits. First, it's economical. This is because there is no need for any specialized equipment such as bucket trucks or cranes to inspect bridge components. The use of UAV for bridge inspection is also safer compared to the traditional means. This is because bridge components that require rope access can now be inspected safely with the use of UAV. It also results in efficiency and productivity. With UAVs, we are able to minimize road closure in order to reduce the inconveniences we subject the public to during bridge inspection. It is also easy to make use of advanced data analytic tools to perform post-processing of the data we collect with the UAV. UAVs are remotely piloted and the medium of communication between the controller and the UAV is radio frequency channels. The most common frequency channels used by UAV for their communication is the 1.2 to 2.4 gigahertz. The five gigahertz channel is also employed by most UAV to transmit the video between the UAV and the cockpit. However, these frequency channels are not reserved only for the UAVs. There are other services such as Wi-Fi, mobile networks, which include both GSM, 3G and 4G, which share similar frequency. Therefore, the possibility of the UAV communication channel being impacted by other services operating in similar frequencies cannot be overlooked. Thankfully, the Federal Communication Commission requires all electronic equipment to have some minimum level of RF immunity. This, however, is not sufficient 
The reason being that most UAVs are manufactured for general purpose. Therefore, it is not possible for the drone manufacturers to cover all possible scenarios the UAVs are likely to be encountered during its operation. Therefore, in this work, we design experiments that subject the UAV to control level of electromagnetic interference. We then analyze the impact the interference have on the command and control signal, video and telemetry information, and the GPS status. We began the design of this experiment by first setting our objective. Here, our objective was to test the UAV's RF immunity. We then defined our scope for the work. We limited our scope to assessing the impact of RF noise on command and control signal, the video feed, and the GPS signal. The test articles that was used for this work include the UAV, the signal generator, the spectrum analyzer, the transmit and the receive antenna, etc. We measured the impact of the interference of the UAV by using subjective means. So basically, we asked ourselves, when interference is present, do we have control and command signal? Do we still get a video feed? What is the title of GPS signal? We then performed the experiment, collected the data, and then perform our analysis. So this picture shows the setup of our experiment. So on the top deck, we see the spectrum analyzer. And at the bottom deck, we see the signal generator. As can be seen, we've connected both the spectrum analyzer and then the signal generator to the receive and transmit antennas respectively. Also shown is a UAV. In order to, voice, in order to avoid ad advertisement for any company, in subsequent sections, we refer to the UAVs we use in this work as UAV1 and UAV2. In executing this experiment, we considered two different positioning means. In the first positioning means, we place the UAV and the cockpit very close to the RF source. We then gradually move the UAV and the cockpit together away from the RF noise. At each location, we check the impact the RF noise has on the video and command signal and also the GPS status. In the second position means, we place the UAV and the controller close to the RF source, similar to the previous means. However, in this case, we gradually move the controller away from the RF source while keeping the UAV very close to the RF source. Similar to the above, at each location, we check the impact the RF noise has on the command and control signal, the video, and the GPS signal. We also consider two means of noise introduction into the test environment. The first one, we introduce a sustained RF noise into the frequency band of interest. In the second case, we introduce a sweeping RF noise in the frequency band of interest. In the subsequent session, I will explain what I mean by sustained RF noise and sweeping RF noise. Here, we outline the procedure used to perform this experiment. So we started by using a spectrum analyzer to 
obtain the baseline RF noise in the test environment. We then turn on the UAV and the controller. After that, we check the command and control signal, the GPS status, and the video feed to ensure that everything is working as expected. At this point, we have not introduced any external noise. We are just looking at how the system will perform in its normal condition. We then introduce the artificial RF noise into our test environment. And again, we check the command and control signal, the GPS status, and the video feed. As mentioned earlier on, we consider two means of RF noise generation. In this session, I'll present the results of the sustained RF noise experiment. So we started by first obtaining the baseline environmental noise using the spectrum analyzer. And we also obtained the RF signal power between the UAV and the cockpit. So this figure shows the signal for both the noise and also the communication channel between the UAV and the cockpit. After that, we introduce the sustained RF noise into the frequency band of interest. By sustain, here I mean we chose a single point in the frequency band of interest and apply a high power RF noise at that position. We then check how our UAV will perform in the presence of this sustained RF noise. We made observations after we introduced the sustained RF noise into the frequency band of interest. First, we realized that both UAVs has some mechanism from swi for switching between the default communication channel to a redundant one when the default channel is interfered with noise. So as can be seen in the chart, when we introduce the sustained RF noise at this point, the UAV switch its communication channel to this point. And then when we introduce the RF channel at this, the interference noise at this point is switched back to the fourth channel. We realize that the time it takes for the UAV to switch from the default channel to the redundant channel is a UAV dependent. In the case of UAV1, the switching time was so fast that it was impossible for us to detect any performance degradation. This was not the case for UAV2. UAV2 took about 15 seconds to switch between the channels. And during this period, the command and control signal, the video and the GPS is impacted. In this table, I summarize the results of the various tests that we perform under sustained RF noise. So first, we started by positioning the UAV at a distance of 20 meters. And then we started ramping up the RF noise from a very low value like minus 30 dB up to 15 dBm. We realized that there was no impact on the UAV's performance. We reduced the distance to 10 meters, still ramping the power from low value up to 15 dBm. There was no impact. We repeated similar experiment for five meters and one meters respectively, and there was no impact on the UAV one. However, with the UAV two, we realized that at minus 30 D, minus 50 dBm, there was no impact on the performance. 
when we reduce the power to, we increase the power to minus 30 dBm, there was no impact. However, at the power level greater than minus 17 dBm, the command and control signal, the video and the GPS are impacted. So we perform a similar experiment as above, but this time we use a sweeping RF noise. Similar to the above experiment, we use a spectrum analyzer to establish the baseline RF noise and the RF signal power between the drone and the UAV, as can be shown. We then introduce a sweeping noise into the frequency band of interest. So here we intro the sweeping noise at one point and then it swept across the whole frequency band of interest periodically. After that, we check the performance this sweeping noise have on the performance of the UAV. In this table also, I summarize the results of the impact of sweeping noise on UAV1 and UAV2. At RF noise up to 20 dBm, we realized that there was no impact on UAV1. However, at 17 dBm, we realized that the video of UAV2 was impacted the quality of the video became very bad. Here, I show a picture we took for values less than minus 17 dBm for UAV2, and also for values of RF noise greater than or equal to minus 17 dBm. As can be seen on the right pane, it is obvious that when the noise is greater than minus 17 dBm, the quality becomes very bad. Also, when we increase our power to 10 dBm, we realize that RF noise severely impacted the command and control, the video and the GPS signal. At 10 dBm, we realize that there was a total connection loss between the UAV and the controller. And then as mentioned earlier on, this really takes about 15 seconds before the UAV is able to switch to a different channels in order to regain the connection. This kind of behavior might not be suitable in case the UAV is being used for bridge inspection. With this behavior, the likelihood of the UAV crashing can be very high. So in conclusion, we are able to show that there's a potential loss of ROC signal and video feed in the presence of RF noise. We've also shown that RF noise can also impact the GPS functionality. Our results also, we also realized from the results that the UAVs that we use for this experiment have mechanisms for switching their communicating channels when the default one is interfered with. However, the switching time varies from UAV to UAV. UAV with longer switching time may not be suitable for bridge inspection when RF noise is present. This is due to the fact that there's usually a total loss of communication between the controller and the cockpit, which can lead to crashes. Therefore, it is important to check RF immunity of a potential UAV that we want to use for bridge inspection in order to avoid accident. This work was supported by North Carolina ANT, as a laboratory teammates, UNCC research team, 
North Carolina Department of Transportation, and our industrial partners, Delta Aerolos, Paros, Cardio, and Intel. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us on below emails. Thank you.